Hi, this is Frazier Nyasulu again. It's time to talk about lab number four in CAM 1500. So, mixtures and separations. Here's the deal. We live in a world where most things come to us as mixtures. Even when um, we attempt to make pure substances, uh, in most cases you end up with mixtures. And so you have to perform certain processes in order to go from mixture to pure substances. And so we'll examine the more simple ones in this case. Let me get some pointer options here, pen. All right, so if we're doing uh, separations, we want to ensure that we're not causing a chemical reaction because if we do, then we're changing the substances. So most of um, the separation processes are based on physical phenomenon so that not chemical but physical so the substances remain the same and you can kind of separate them in that way as you uh, go through your uh, chemistry education you you will see a lot of these more advanced uh, processes that facilitate separation you know in our case of course uh, this being a uh, uh, the, the first uh, separation process we're really doing we'll examine simple but fundamental processes and so we can separate things based on boiling. Uh, you're kind of familiar with that in everyday life. You take salt and water, you can boil off the water and you remain with the salt. And then uh, uh, we'll uh, uh, look at sublimation and deposition. How can that be used to separate things? Uh, in this case, of course, in order for that to happen, the substance or one of them, one component in the mixture must be able to sublime that is go from solid to gas directly. And then an all important uh, uh, one is uh, uh, using centrifugation, the sp spinning that's kind of used to separate things and that's certainly heavily used in the medical field. Moving right along. Um, I wanna briefly examine uh, physical states here because what we're doing if you look at uh, the two first processes earlier on, that is boiling and, uh, and sublimation, deposition, those are physical. And so I want to examine what, uh, what kind of keeps the molecules together in various states. And of course, it's intermolecular forces. You'll learn more about these as you go forth. And so we want to just be able to say, um, if you have a solid, then there must be very strong intermolecular forces holding the molecules together in fixed positions. Okay. And so for solids, you get vibrational motion and not translational. In the liquid, the, the, the forces are sort of intermediate, allowing uh, the molecules to move around, but holding them in close proximity. Um, and so they're intermediate forces and then they're really weak in the gaseous phase and sometimes we estimate the gas phase intermolecular forces to be zero. And so these transitions then have to do with uh, uh, um, changing these forces and most of uh, our physical states, as you know from everyday life, uh, involve uh, energy input or energy removal from whatever we're thinking about. So, uh, boiling, well, we know all about boiling, just a distinction here. Uh, boiling, we th think of going from liquid to gas, and so when the distinction of vaporization and boiling, boiling occurs at the boiling point, vaporization occurs anything below the boiling point. So water is evaporating at 30 and it's boiling, it's not boiling at 30, but boils at 100, at least under ordinary one atmosphere conditions. Right, moving along. Sublimation, you're kind of familiar with one, well, yeah, sure. Uh, solid to gas directly. The opposite of that is deposition, not a term that we kind of meet in everyday language. Um, <clears throat> but that's sort of the, the re reverse process. Uh, and in our case, uh, we'll be dealing with iodine, I2. 
I2 is ordinarily solid uh, and even at room temperature and the room conditions you can see some of the brown I2 is a nice brown solid that actually exceeds from the system I'll ignore my phone hope it cuts off really quickly here all right moving along centrifugation that's um, based on rotation um, if you take uh, a test tube and you have a mixture in there solid sort of solid particles whatever it is if you were to rotate it high spin then the particles are forced to the side and packed to the side in our case here is our centrifuge unit uh, these are the units that we're gonna put our sample in yeah that right there and there are four of them here and that's sort of at 45 degrees this thing rotates quite quickly and if I have uh, a solution that I'd solid all mixed through here so that it's it's not a true solution you've actually got solid particles a, a, a good thing to imagine is if you take chalk chalk doesn't dissolve in water regular chalk but if you grind it and kind of make a mixture in water right a heterogeneous mixture and then you were to rotate at high velocity to find that the chalk collects down there and so in keeping with uh, chemistry here gotta know the terminology the solid that uh, gets down there is the uh, pellet pellet aha pellet and the liquid portion here is uh, supernatant so in this case to end the separation to effectively do it in the end you actually pour out and again the appropriate terminology decant <laughs> decant <laughs> the supernatant so uh, procedure real simple here sublimation deposition and then we're going to talk about uh, uh, centrifugation and boiling um, here, here's your sublimation setup you weigh out a certain amount of sand mixture sand mixed with iodine if you look at it you see that iodine is subliming slowly now we want to it to sublime faster so we then apply some heating some heating and then because it's subliming and the gas is like oh it's gonna go out so how about if we put this tray here um, and put some ice uh, it will cause the escaping gas to, 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 to depose it. So what you're seeing is sublimation here, solid to gas, and up here collection of nice brown stuff, gas to solid, which is of course deposition. I won't be using a beaker like that, we'll be using these uh, um, uh, trays here to hold our ice. So, uh, weigh out a certain amount in a, in, a, in a beaker, and this happens in the hood. We don't want to be bring, bring, breathing any of the iodine. Uh, heat and observe what happens. Uh, as it's heating, you'll be putting several of these, not only one. You can put in five or six of them on the heating pad here. And so, uh, you, you know which one is yours, of course, and then periodically come and look. The idea is to look and see at the end of your experiment that all of the um, brown particles in the sand have, us, have gotten out and so if we do a weighing of the beaker beaker plus sand before heating beaker plus sand after heating we should be able to find the mass of the I2 and uh, just some uh, useful things useful to use the same balance because they kind of in that way you're, you're minimizing um, balance differences <coughs> and at the end you'll have uh, the the i2 at the back of that dish you want to wash it with acetone acetone is a good solvent uh, and all of this will then go in a waste container in the hood so the way we've done it is have all of these operations okay in the hood by the time you take out the uh, your beaker to weigh it um, after the heating, I want to make sure that all the I2 is gone. 
and there's a safety here make sure that uh, you're not trying to hold hold hot things so let things cool and that is give it sufficient time for cooling all right so this is the form that you're gonna use mass of beaker beaker plus sand before heating uh, uh, beaker plus sand after heating you can kind of project uh, how these will go you get an increase from here to here and then a decrease from here to here right and then we ask you some questions here uh, again uh, the idea is to make observations and be able to record those in a nice clean scientific way what is the evidence that sublimation is occurring you can actually see the brown gas and then its deposition and so on and so on moving right along then the calculations um, sand and mixture uh, you can find the mass of the sand you can find the mass of the I2 then we'll ask you to find percent mass percent mass is mass of the I2 over mass of the mixture not sand but of mixture times 100 and then we we'll also ask you to do the same as uh, here's percent this is 10 to the 2 right a number that we like and this is 10 to the 6 and you look at these numbers and uh, think of which one makes more sense to use they're really the same thing as long as you know what you're multiplying with uh, the general principle is you don't want to use very big numbers or very small numbers so whichever one wakes up to be a number between one and a hundred uh, is more useful so is it this one or is that that one and then with that you use parts per hundred which is percent or parts per million aha centrifuge uh, I indicated earlier on the metal tube that you're gonna rotate you have to pull it up from the centrifuge okay and uh, 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 that's the one and you'll add six milliliters of, of magnesium hydroxide magnesium hydroxide is sort of insoluble so if you look at it it'll be white and chalky so you want to mix it up before you pull out the six milliliters uh, so you mix it up then with the auto pipette aha you're good at auto pipetting now right auto pipette into the uh, metal tube and then centrifuge you want to make sure that uh, when you are centrifuging the centrifuge is balanced that is a tube here that should be a tube opposite otherwise then it doesn't work very well it's unbalanced so you have to uh, opposite op opposite masses that are about the same in all of them centrifuge for five minutes examine the tube you should be able to see a pellet at the bottom the solid at the bottom and the supernatant okay um if you have a small beaker and uh, you you kind of heat it or clean it and weigh the beaker then you can try this uh, you can decant the supernatant into the beaker again weigh it all right weigh it so you know the mass of the beaker and the supernatant that you've just decanted <laughs> then a careful heating uh we've talked about heating here um this flame must be not nice but not too on rice not too strong and then you you take the flame in and out in and out in and out um to make sure that you're not causing sputtering so that's done and then you let the the beaker cool and then you weigh the beaker that's uh, the story with the supernatant <clears throat> So, uh, by the operations that we've talked about earlier on, you'll actually know the mass of the solid uh, residue, okay? Mass of the solid residue after boiling off the water. Then mass of the solution, the supernatant, right? And then you can say percent total dissolved solids. By mass how much stuff is dissolved in there so mass of stuff that's dissolved over mass of the solution times 100 what does that number look like percent TDS is one of the important parameters that uh, the people who work in the water industry actually try and determine because that uh, tells them what they need to do in order 
uh, for them to purify the water and uh, have it come down your uh, your pipe as usable. All right, moving along. Mass of the centrifuge tube, mass of centrifuge plus six milliliters. Okay, that the difference of course gives you the mass of the mixture, mass of the beaker, mass of the beaker plus supernatant liquid, right? Mm -hmm. Mass of the beaker plus solid residue. Again, all of this is data. And then you go through the calculations where we ask you to find a number of masses. Um, uh, mass of the six mil, mass of the supernated liquid, mass of the boiled water, mass of the solid residue. All of those are based from a linear combination subtraction of the things you've done before. And then at the end here, mass of total dissolved solids um, uh, for this part. Um, so this is a simple, straightforward lab. Just make sure you do things carefully. Uh, there is sputtering and all kinds of issues, although we're not dealing with dangerous stuff. Hot stuff that's sputtering uh, can hurt uh, the skin or the eyes. More importantly, it's just the rules we're required to wear our lab goggles in all our, our lab experimentation. Uh, for the centrifuge, it rotates very quickly, so let it come to its standstill on its own. Be patient, don't try and uh, uh, stop it with your hand. I've had uh, somebody get a nice, uh, well, well, an unhealthy cut uh, from the centrifuge. So again, just let it uh, uh, do its own thing. All right, great. Have a great lab. Bye-bye.